Okay, so following on from last week's video about the range of old retro items I've not tried out yet. From most of, most of the comments, you can see that most of you are interested in checking out the new retro bit, 8-bit do N64 controller. So here it is right next to an original, and as you can see, extremely similar. And to be fair, the quality of both of these are really similar as well. It's not like um, the new one from 8-bit D there is a lot lighter or um, less quality. They feel very, very close to each other. So I would say they put a lot of work in the design there and the quality, the build, it's all very, very close. I mean, obviously the color scheme there is um, identical. And if we flip them over, you can see you've got Z trigger on the back, um, same on the both, space for the, um, the memory card pack there, it goes in the um, slot on the back. Obviously you've got a section for syncing that you won't need on the cabled original, but um, besides that, extremely similar um, in both ways. So you've got the shoulder buttons as well. The quality on these is pretty good. In fact, pressing the buttons on both of these, I would be hard pressed to tell the difference. So. If you do choose to get one of these, you can be pretty well assured that the quality is really going to be there. I think 8-bit do must have worked with Retrobit on this one, maybe for licensing or um, the production, or obviously they've got a, a relationship there because usually most of 8-bit do controllers are just made by them themselves. But um, in this case, they've obviously partnered with Retrobit and it is a great product. I have tried this out earlier on the Raspberry Pi and it does pair really easily, really well, and it works, um, well, really well with the N64 game. So I've configured these with the config files in RetroPie and I'll show you that in a moment. But just to run through some of the buttons here, you can see that in this 8-bit D1, if I hold it there, you should see that. Um, obviously you've got a D-pad and the reason I'll run through this is because it's very different to most other controllers that have got ABXY, start select, a couple of shoulder buttons and that's about it, maybe an analog button. But the layout on these N64s is extremely different. So um, when you boot up into RetroPie, you'll see the input options. You've got the D-pad here, which is obviously um, what you'd use to select that. But then when it comes to things like saying X and Y, well, you don't have that option here. So the, the virtual RetroPad, if you like, has to kind of assume a few things and you've got to make a few decisions on what you want to use for that purpose. But I'll run through that um, in a moment on that video. But just to, to explain what I do on that, because you'll only see the screen there, you won't see the, me run through with this controller. You've got um, the analog button here, which um, effectively up, down, left, right. It doesn't have an actual button press like most of the other more modern analog controllers. So there isn't a down press on that. It's just up, down, left, right. Um, start button there, that's fine. Now on the back for the Z trigger, you can map that to either say right trigger or even select, because if you don't use a select button when you're going through this, you won't get the RetroArch shortcut keys. But then that will depend on whether you want to um, use those hotkeys at all, or even if you're using a RetroArch emulator, because the default on RetroPie isn't even a RetroArch based um, emulator, it's the Mupin64 Plus. So um, there's a few options in terms of the config, but it's certainly a really decent build um, and you don't even need to use Bluetooth if you don't want. So whilst I'll run through that in a moment, you can just use the provided six foot long USB cable there. And that's how it looks there. And in the background, you can see, um, plus in the, the old video, here's the packaging sort of outside box for the controller that comes in. It's about 30 quid. You can get it on Amazon or eBay or um, various sort of distributors. So it's not difficult to get hold of. And, and they put a lot of work in making sure that does look as authentic as possible. So you can see all the details there, if I hold that there. It also comes with, um, as I showed, the USB cable, plus you get a, a little key ring in the box from RetroBit there. You can see that. Um, and besides that, it's just the, the manual. And um, this is downloadable off their site, but essentially it just says it's got details in there about, have a look, about the connection method. But it's pretty simple with this. All you've got to do is tap the start button, which is this mode one. So that's all I've used and it works without any problem at all. So if I get that controller, you can see when I begin to pair this, you've got your lights on the side here, which relate to charging or pairing or the Bluetooth connected, etc. So you just hold down start. The blue starts um, flashing there. And as long as that's going like that, you know it's trying to pair. And when it does pair, it I'm pretty sure that goes solid rather than the manual does mention that it will, hang on a sec, the manual says,
pretty sure the manual says it still flashes somewhere. I can't find that now. But um, it's pretty obvious when you're using it that it's found it okay, plus you get feedback from the screen confirming it's connected. So it's not a problem at all. Now, quick aside, whilst I'm five minutes in, this video isn't going to be, right, press this, press that, do that, and you'll be connected. It's going to be a general discussion about the controller and the, con the config files. If you want to get straight to the point, check out the directions, go to the wiki, have a look at the documentation, and you'll see it um, much more quickly and clearly there. This is just going to be sort of a, more of a chat around how it works. But it does do the job really well. Like I say, it's um, pretty much identical to the original. Um, I didn't use this that much um, years ago, but I know that um, from testing out recently, it is um, decent quality. Okay, so when we go through the mapping process for um, this controller, I'll go through um, the selection buttons I'm choosing, and whilst that's up, down, left, right, D-pad, that's start, I will tend to go for select on here, but you'll see that some people choose right trigger for that on RetroArch. Um, then you've got your analog, I choose this to be analog left, so I'll put the feedback for that when it's prompting me for the left items. They, those are obviously A and B buttons, so stick to that. Then you've got the C directional buttons here, up, down, left, right. When prompted for that, I tend to put it in the right analog option, so when it says right analog stick, go right, left, up, down. Whilst it completely obviously isn't an analog stick, that's the inputs that I map to it. Because when you do that, the process will be that the emulation station stage of the input writes those, date, writes those um, codes back to the N64 emulator, um, not just the RetroArch element, but Mupin64 Plus, so it tries to, to map that back to c correctly show that when you're um, playing the, that game. So you don't have to manually create your config files, but what I'll do, I'll link to my config file that I've tested and tweaked um, to make sure it maps exactly to these buttons. So you can always just copy the file into the directory I'll show you, and it will be exactly correct for this controller, the retro bit, an 8-bit D N64 Bluetooth controller. Um, it worked there, no problem. If uh, you don't want it to continually try to pair, just hold down start, that one goes on, that one goes off, and then it's stopped. That's the micro USB just to charge, or you could um, plug it in USB, but I never have plugged it into USB. Um, battery life seems pretty lengthy. I've only tried it for a couple of hours or so, but it's more than happy with that. And on the back there, you just see the standard um, uh, sync button there to, uh, I guess, clear the pairing info. I haven't used it, but I'm sure it's covered in the manual. And yeah, standard game pack socket. Okay. Um, yeah, so that would be all the mappings, and that's the controller. Like I say, it's definitely worthwhile checking this one out. It's great quality and it does work very well with RetroPie, as you'll see now. Okay, here we are in RetroPie. I've just booted into a clean install of 4.1. Um, I've updated the script, but that's about it. And we're gonna add, via Bluetooth, the N64 controller. So all you need to do, um, get your existing controller that you're using to um, control emulation station or a keyboard or whatever you've added so far. I just happen to have added a, a USB controller. So I go into control, um, retro, RetroPie, choose Bluetooth, and now it's been made really easy because a lot of this can be done without any bother at all um, in this. Hopefully that is clear. I'm not sure whether it will be, but all I'm choosing there is the Bluetooth menu, and at the top I will choose register and connect to the Bluetooth device because that's the first step you need to follow. There's a lot of um, details on this, adding generally controllers via Bluetooth on the wiki or the document area, so you can check that out for more details, but basically you just um, select this button. But before I do that, I'll get the controller ready to um, search for or to pair to try and connect to the, the Pi. So to do that, I'm going to hold down the start button for about two seconds. As soon as it turns on or by the LED at the top, I can let go because that'll put it in mode one, the joystick mode, which is what you need to pair it. So I'll hold that down now. Lights have come on, I've let go, and now the blue LED is sort of flashing fairly rapidly. Um, just watching that at the moment. It probably does it in a batch of about three or four seconds, then it pauses briefly and it goes back to flashing rapidly. So that's searching. So on RetroPie, I can go to Register and Connect, select that with that A button. It's searching, see what it comes up with. Sometimes I'll press a few input buttons on the controller 
um, to some, I don't know, in my mind it seems to make a bit of a difference, it might make no difference at all. And the LED is slowing down, flashing for whatever reason, but the RetroPie has detected an unknown device, I don't know what MAC address that is, and a TV. Um, so it's not seen what I want it to, so I'll do that again. Uh, if I cancel that, search again. I mean, it might do it first time for you, or when I've done it before, it's taken a couple of times maybe to try and find it. Okay, so now I've found another device, but I don't know the name of it. I think it is that top one, but I'm not going to trust it. So what I'll do, just on, just to make sure, if I, I find if I do it a couple of times, then it does bring back the name. I don't know why it doesn't bring back the first time, but it does bring it back, so I'll just wait for it to do that. The blue LED is still flashing, although it's gone much slower. Um, okay, so it's found another device with a name, but not this one. So I'll try it again, cancel that. I'll press a few buttons this time, see if it makes any difference. The blue LED has gone a lot more rapidly now, maybe because I'm pressing a couple of buttons. Okay, there we go. It's the top one. I should really note down that MAC address so I, I don't need to know what the name is if I do this in future. But it's just obviously a lot more clear now. It says 8 bit do N64 gamepad, so I know that's the one I want. The blue LED is flashing rapidly there and sort of batched three or four seconds, pause, then does it again. So I'll select that, A OK, and I'll choose the first one here, display yes, no, to sort of handshake, I guess. And the LED is now solid on. So on the controller, um, actually it's sort of glowing, but it's still on all the time. It just sort of changes the brightness. Yeah, just glows there. Okay, and RetroPie says successfully registered. Brilliant. That's the. Well, that's all there is to it, really. But um, we'll go through some of these other points to make sure it's all connected properly. Now this is a clean install of 4.1. But um, I did install this controller before, so there's a couple of steps I've already done, but I'll go through them again now, just to be clear. So the first one, we've registered it. The next one down, remove. Obviously, we don't need to do that. And um, the next one down, display registered and connected devices. Well, we don't need to do that. I know I've just connected to this one, because it said connected, plus my LED is showing as connected by being on all the time there. Um, now, set up UDEV rule. This is effectively to allow Emulation Station to properly see the controller, so it treats it um, as it needs to. And it is an 8-bit D controller, so I'd run through this. This takes a second, so you just say OK to that one, set up the UDEV rule, and set up the UDEV rule for the device that we're talking about, which is the N64 gamepad. And it says an entry already exists. An entry already exists because I did it yesterday. Um, but obviously if you haven't done that yet, it would write it quite happily and it just tells you the rule it writes. So that's okay, that's done. And then down here where it says configure Bluetooth connect mode, currently boot. And that just makes sure that if there's an issue when you restart your um, Raspberry Pi, that the controller does connect properly. Now I find quite often when I um, choose default, it doesn't automatically connect. Um, I'm not too sure why, but all I do is choose boot and it quite happily connects on, on startup. And background, I guess, forces it to always check. If it um, goes to sleep effectively or turns off, then it will regularly sort of poll for that controller to reconnect it if you lose connection. But for the minute, the boot option is fine for me. That's working without an issue. Um, and then the last one down here, 8-bit do mapping hack off. This is to do with the firmware, the 8-bit do ship. With some of their controllers, um, particularly the earlier ones, the firmware that ships with it, um, I guess it kind of messed with the button, button codes. It The button codes reported weren't what the systems were expecting to see, so it meant that when you saved your changes, um, some of the buttons were reversed um, and you had to manually fix it. So, and, and this little hack um, gets around that and uh, sets the correct codes. But with the this controller, there's only really one firmware, and I think it's 1.1. 1 .1. Um, there's two subsequent firmwares for it, but they're beta anyway, so I wouldn't bother putting those on. But even the old firmware acts correctly. So I found, at least in my testing, if you set this to hack off for this controller, um, it works fine. So where it says new firmware, um, I'd set it to that. So if you have got the hack um, on, then you might have a problem with the controller. Um, but you're welcome to try that. But I'd use off and everything's fine. So that's it. 
Um, at that point, when you do these steps, it probably prompts you to restart the Pi. But because I've done that process anyway, I shouldn't need to. So I might be able to get away without restarting. But at this point, once you've done those three things, so you've registered it, you've set up the UDEV rule, and you've set the relevant um, connect mode, then you might need to restart. So I'm going to go cancel that. Oh, and obviously the hack should be off. And if I go back, now if I check by pressing the start button and configure input, and yes, I'm sure I want to configure input. Yeah, so I've got to that point where it's two gamepads detected. So if I hold a button briefly on the N64, that says at the bottom, you can see it popping up there, that it can see the gamepad. Um, what you'll be doing, because you'll probably be restarting the computer and, or the Pi, at that point, your N64 will go, the blue LED at the top will go solid to say it's connected. And then, um, assuming you've already got controller configured for the Pi, it just go into the same interface and you press start and you're away. And then at this point, this is where we map the buttons, which because the N64 controller is slightly bizarre layout is where you've got to be a little bit more careful than usual. So if we carry on there, let's just choose a button. Okay, so I just held down a button on the, on the controller. Um, to get into the configuration section. Now, you've seen, you obviously know what the N64 controller looks like, and the first thing it's saying is, hey, put the D-pad in. Well, it's only got one D-pad, it's obvious which one it is, that's fine, that's pretty clear. So D-pad on the left-hand side there is up, down, left, right. Then it's asking for the start button, which is the central red one, mark start, obviously, hit start. Now, select is this, it doesn't have a select button. That's the long and the short of it, but, you can say you want to use one of the existing buttons as a select button if you want, or you can not bother and skip it by pressing a key that's already been mapped or something along those lines. But I'm going to use a select button because I want, for this purpose anyway, to get the hotkeys working and the default hotkey mappings work. You can manually override it, but the defaults are based on holding select and then pressing the hotkey button of the action that you want to perform. So I'm going to say on the back of the controller, the Z trigger, which quite often is used as, um, as a right trigger during this menu, I'm going to instead say it's a select button. So where it says select, I'm going to pull the Z button. There we go. Okay, now it says A, and there is an A button. It's the blue one. Press that. B, and there is the green one. I'll press that. X, Y doesn't have one, and I'm not going to map one. So I'm just going to hold A again, and it should say not defined because I've already used it and it doesn't have a Y one either and I'm not going to define one so I'll hold it A again okay left shoulder yep it's got one of those right shoulder has got that left trigger hasn't got one hold down A right trigger like I say you could use the Z because um, that might map through better um, with the config the controller config files but I'm going to leave it as it is for the minute because um, obviously I've used that for select anyway so hold down A again to skip that Okay, left thumb. Left thumb is when you press down on an analog controller. I've got an analog one in the center, obviously, below the start button, but there's no press down option, so I have to skip that. Okay, right thumb. There's no right analog controller, so I skip that. Right, left analog, up, up, down, left, right. So that's the single analog controller. I can do that. So left, up. Uh, down, left, and right. There we go. Okay, now, right analog. There's no right analog controller, but there is a C button with up, down, left, right, the yellow buttons in the top right corner. And I'm going to use the right analog to map these against. Um, as I mentioned before, there is like di good diagrams in the wiki about this mapping. But even so, it still leaves a few questions and interpretation about how you want to apply this and the best way to get the mapping because this process isn't just control isn't just setting up the controls to use an emulation station it's writing a file for retroarch to use and it's writing a file for mupin 64 plus to use and it does some other systems like i think the dreamcast controller so it it maps all of these inputs here to various systems um, and usually it's really a fairly straightforward mapping process but because the n64 is slightly different it's it's got to, I don't know, interpret it in a certain way. Anyway, right analog up, down, left, right. I'm going to use the yellow buttons because that seems to work best. So 
right analog up, down, left and right. There we go. And OK. And obviously the A button is OK. Done. So that's now, I'm now wirelessly, trust me, moving the N64 controller and the up, down, left, right, A, B buttons are working fine in Emulation Station. Um, and I can see in the Nintendo 64, I've got all of two games. And, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, where was I? N64. Okay, so Super Mario is quite a good choice here because it can have an action on all of the buttons so you can test them all out. So I'm going to give that a go. But also, as soon as this screen pings up, I'm going to press A so I can get into this screen. I just want to check which emulator I'm using. Because first, I want to show you RetroArch. And that's not the default in... RetroArch isn't the default in um, in RetroPie, or at least not 4.1 RetroPie. Because Moopin64 Plus, in a lot of ways, does a better job. I think it's a ported Moopin64 Plus in the RetroArch core. But for whatever reason, um, most people will prefer using the sort of native emulator, if you like. Um, okay, so first, I want to show you RetroArch because, you know, you might want to use that for ease of configuration for shaders or whatever else. So, select default emulator for N64. Well, for the minute, I'm going to choose LibRetro at the top there, which is RetroArch based. Okay, so, okay. Done that. Now I'm going to launch. Okay, there we go. Now, this is no configuration tweaking at all. There's no shaders. There's no um, optimizing the video plugins. Not that you probably can with the RetroArch one anyway, but there's no, it's just straight out of the box really. Now, I have um, obviously, as you've just seen, configured all the buttons. So I could press start and I should just be in. So if I press start, there we go. It's quite happily detecting that. And I'll show you the config files in a minute so you can see what that generated. Don't forget, as I mentioned about 10 minutes ago, this video is not about press this, press that, this is how you configure a controller. It's just a chat about how I'm going about controlling it and how it works. Okay, so start. Bit of a cutscene. And I could probably do some of the hotkeys now. So if I held down my select, which is the Z trigger, and tapped um, B, that would probably reset the game. And then I think I found by holding down two of the yellow C buttons, it almost emulated a X, which I think is the RetroArch menu. Let me try that. No, maybe not. I'm sure I was doing that the other day, but anyway. Oh, I know what I did. I think I manually altered the file so I could get the menu up. Or can I do that with the keyboard? Anyway, we're in the game. Um, okay, so it says press A to jump, B to attack. That's not playing with A. B's working. Okay, so B's jumping. There's my analog button. Quite happy there. Um, trigger. Yeah, that's going down. Yeah, these, these button mappings are not right. Oh, that's right, the C um, up down is right, because that's zooming correctly. Left's going, actually, no, left's going left. The C buttons are mapping correctly. Whoa. And that quit, so yeah, I press select and B and that quit right out. Okay, what I'm going to do is quickly manually tweak the config file and see if I can get um, that working a bit better and then I'll show you what I've done. Um, this bit is not going to be very exciting. Hang on. Okay, so I'm just remotely connecting to the Pi and going into the config area. Like I say, I'll show you this in a second. And I'm going to edit the controls, oh, that's slightly wrong, hang on one sec. It 
it's all changed. It's all better now, but it's all changed. Anyway, um, okay, so I'm going to edit the controller for RetroArch, which is that one. There we go. And let's see, I think I've got a better input than that. Or at least one that gets me into the menu anyway. Here we go. Okay, so menu. Menu toggle three. Three is one of the C buttons. Okay, so I'm just going to put the menu toggle button in and we'll go from there, I think. Menu toggle three. Okay. Save that. Right, let's go back in. Um, select. Here we go. Okay, I think I selected one of the C buttons for the menu. So if I hold down my select button, which is the Z trigger, and tap one of the C's. Hello. There we go, I'm in. Right, so that's the RetroArch menu. Um, as you can see, I'm using Meepin 64 Plus um, emulator down there, the core. And I want to go to settings, I think. And uh, no, maybe I don't want settings. I want quick menu and I want controls. Okay, so there's, there's obviously loads of settings in here, but the ones we care about at the minute are down here. Um, and this is where you can map your buttons. So the the buttons mentioned on the left are literally the, the N64 options. So where it says A button, that is the A button on the controller. Um, similarly, C1, C4. I forget if C1 is up or down or left or right. Um, anyway, let's go here. So A button on the on the right hand side column. That's the retro pad, virtual pad, if you like. So um, when I did that, I said the A button was A when we did the emulation station process. So if I find A button here, it should map quite happily. There we go, A. Um, yeah. A button right? Oh, I suppose it's on the right, yeah. Um, B button right, there we go. B button down. Oh yeah, because on the, the Super Nintendo kind of layout, um, B is down and A is on the right. Yeah. Okay, start button start, great. Up, down, left, right, that's okay. Um, C1, C4 are the other... Um, so really, for the, the C buttons, I should be using the right analog options, but I think it goes slightly quirky here. Hang on. A button. Don't want the shoulder button. Um, R2 button. R3 button. No. I probably should have written down what I used earlier. I'll put X there for the minute. Anyway, L trigger is um, I think that means left shoulder really. Yeah, like it's got there. That's correct. So R trigger is right shoulder. Fine. Z trigger um, is the L2 button. Well, actually I chose the Z trigger should be select. So if I choose select here there we go. That should equal that. Um, C button mode. So that would Flip it into the mode, maybe. Okay, as you can tell, as guides go, this is poor because I don't know how that C button's mode works. Uh, the control stick is the, the analog, the single analog, and that's right. Um, left and then right. Uh, sorry, left analog X, left analog Y, that's the, the analog bit correctly done. And then you've got your last TC buttons, so it's just the TC buttons that. Or a, a bit. So yeah, C button X, right analog, that's right, and C button Y, right analog Y. That will mean um, that my right analog stick is on that C is on that correct right C button. So that's fine. It's just these two C buttons are a bit sketchy on which two these are and what they should be mapped to. Um, Actually, I think, because I know on the um, Libretro site there is a um, pre-made file and it might tell me what the buttons map to. 
um, bear with me, 8-bit D, um, N64, Bluetooth, here we go. Right, so the C, I think it's these last four. Okay, so it's just telling me that it should map to the analog. So I can just look at my manual file. Okay, apologies for the really bad guide here. Right, so I can manually do that in a second. I'm going to back out of that with B because I've changed most of them and go back to the quick menu, resume, press start, and we'll see how many buttons map correctly now. I'll definitely show you the file when I've correctly done it so you can just copy the config file if you want rather than faff about with that. You'll be pleased to note that using the Mupin 64 Plus emulator is much easier from a config side anyway. It's just a bit more clear cut where the, where the controls go. Okay, so let's try my analog stick. Oh, hang on, no, it's not. Let's press A to jump and B to attack. Yep, I'm pressing A, I'm jumping. B, I'm attacking, so that's quite happy. Um, my analog stick's absolutely fine. My digital D pad. Doesn't seem to do anything, but then I wouldn't expect it to, so that's fine. And um, the start button pauses, which is good. Um, I'm not sure about the shoulder buttons, whether they do anything in this one, actually. That's okay, so the right shoulder zooming in, for whatever reason. Anyway, um, yeah, sorry, so B was attack, A was jump. Now, if I jump and pull the trigger, yeah, that's doing the trigger stuff. So the trigger's correctly mapped. Let's try the C buttons, which I was really sketchy on. Um, left, yep, yeah, it's going left, right, going right, up, zooming in, and down, zooming back. So maybe it's to do with that C mode um, button. Anyway, it obviously seems to work quite happily. So that was that was it, really. Um, it's a Bluetooth controller that is working very well once you've got the... Um, buttons map correctly and as you saw doing it from an emulation station um, does attempt to map them all but unless I did something wrong it's not mapping them all um, as the core is expecting it so we had to do a couple of tweaks in there and I'll just quickly go back in there holding that button again um, if I go to just might need to save these out and I forgot because I haven't used this in so long I've forgotten where the config files are written if you try to update it um, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, if I save the core overrides, would that include the controls I just did? I've forgotten. Options. No, I don't want options. Controls. Save core remap file. Save game. No, save core remap file. I'm going to do that because that helped me out in a minute. But. Don't worry, I'll explain it a bit. There we go. Save successfully, so I'll probably find on here somewhere what I've just done. Anyway, that's that. Now, that was probably a complete waste of time because I wouldn't recommend you use this anyway. Um, so ignore all that. Sorry about that. Um, I'll quit with select an X. I don't have an X, so I don't know how to quit. So I'll choose this quit retroarch instead. A. I'm out. Right. Now, what we're gonna do is, instead of that one, I'm gonna select that and change the emulator. And I suggest you change it to uh, Mupin 64 Plus. Now, the reason you've got a whole set of Mupin 64 Pluses is, is just it's defaulting to a different video plugin because different N64 games require different video plugins because the emulation is still, I guess, a bit immature still. Um, for N64, there's lots of tweaks that you can do to optimize things for certain games. They don't behave in a sort of standardized way. You can't set a certain set of settings that makes every game run brilliantly. There's plenty of posts and details on how to configure it to get um, N64 games working really well in particular resolutions or um, with particular video effects or just generally run smoothly at a decent frame rate but I'm not going to cover that here it's just about the controller and getting it working so we've seen it for Retroarch and I'll choose I think it defaults to this one Glide N64 video plugin and um, so I'm going to choose that 
and I'm going to launch the game. And this one has been, I've pre-configured it, and I'll show you that in a moment at the command line, um, which codes I've used, but we just went through this. Mario. That already looks better, to be honest. But um, I will Hello. just test it now to make sure that... Okay. Yeah. I'll just test it now to make sure that all the buttons are behaving exactly as I'd expect, and then it's just, you know, hey, you know the controls are correct. Careful. And all this time, I'm controlling all of this really with that N64 Bluetooth pistol. controller. I'm not using Peach. the keyboard or the... Um, other USB joystick I've got in there, um, and as you've seen earlier in the video, it's it's a really good um, replica of the original. It feels um, really decent quality. Whilst it's loading that, I'm going to type here a second to see if I can see that change I made earlier. Right, we're in the game. Um, completely different emulator. Let's see how the buttons go. Right, B to attack, A to jump. That's not a good start. Oh, I know why this is. It's because um, I reconfigured through emulation station earlier, and that rewrote the mappings to the config file. Um, so yeah, B is jump, but that should be attack. And A is not doing anything. So I'm going to escape out of that, and I'm going to find the file that I need for the controls, which is this one I've got in front of me, and I'm going to get the settings that I think do work for it. I'll copy those, and I will find the section that go in this file, take the old ones out, paste the new ones in, quit and rerun the game A, eh? and hope that works because if that doesn't work I don't know why it's not working it's me Mario hello well starts definitely working I don't know how to skip this hey, Mario. I'm sorry that I've watched it about five times hey, but um, I don't know how you get past it. Peach. I would recommend you check out some of those posts about optimizing the N64 emulator because some of them are, you know, they're not that lengthy, they're not that many steps to do to improve it, and um, it makes a big difference on some of the games because with default settings, some of the games just barely run at all. Anyway, right, here we go. Now let's hope A to jump, B to attack. Okay, so, yes, A is jumping, B is attacking, um, my D pad's doing nothing, fine. Analog running around, fine. Um, if I get analog and jump and Z trigger, yep, that's working fine. Um, what? Yeah, he does all sorts of things. They're fine, right? Um, and the C button. So if I get up, I'm zooming in. Down, I'm zooming out. Swing to the left. Swing to the right. So they all seem fine to me. I'll just check the tr uh, left trigger. Left trigger's doing nothing. Yeah, and right trigger changes the that icon down the bottom. Is that the cameraman? Anyway, it works. Um, and I think that's it. So it does work. It's a little bit of a faff to get the controller configs working because it's an N64. Um, but uh, yeah, it does work. And I'll show you whether all these I'm controller files are. Plus, there could well be a way of getting this to work straight off the bat. Um, by se selecting certain options in the uh, emulation station menu or doing it a completely different way anyway. So I'm not saying this is the right way, but it works for me. It didn't take very long at all. Um, okay, so I'll quit out of this and I'll drop into the command line interface. And you can do that by, in um, this interface, if I press start, 
and quit and then quit emulation station you get to the command line so you can do it that way but I will do it in a slightly different way to get a better view on the um, screen capture okay so let's try that now okay so I just recorded this section uh, this is the second time I've done it it sounds like the first it's the second first was brilliant um, had all the info lots of good useful tips um, but no audio so it was pretty tricky to learn from um, so if I sound slightly unenthusiastic at certain points through this bit that's why okay so what we're going to do is check out those config files that the emulation station process wrote earlier and just check out the um, details in them and how we edited them to make sure that all the mappings are working okay so first thing I want to do is change into the directory where they are and that is apt forward slash retropy forward slash um, configs um, or and retroarch forward slash um, auto go okay um, as a tip if you as you start typing if you hit tab um, it'll auto complete if it's um, sort of valid so it's just a bit more confidence as you go along that it's all right anyway so we're going in that folder and we can see in here we've got some files this file just relates to the standard USB controller I've got in anyway and this is me mucking about um, yesterday and this is the current file that RetroArch is using um, the emulation station process created you know during that interface um, a script captured the inputs and then converted it into the correct RetroArch one so here it is and you can read it if you type nano space 8 bit d um, let's have a look there and I hit tab because I didn't want to type it press enter and here are the keys and as we saw when I went into the um, Mario game not all the buttons were mapped correctly so I went in and edited in the interface the um, the RetroArch menu interface the sort of core remap overrides I wanted to sort of confirm what I wanted to be what button if you like but this file by default because when you're in emulation station you don't choose an X button it means it won't generate um, a shortcut an input menu toggle menu toggle button or a hotkey for the menu so I've manually put that line in um, three so I've said if I hold down select which is the Z trigger in my case and press three which is one of the C buttons I think the down button maybe um, then it should bring up the retroarch menu so I've kind of forced it to do that process there and that's fine you know you can then get in the menu and, and configure things I mean there's a chance that when I'm doing that emulation station um, configuration that it should be able to generate the correct N64 version and straight off the bat but I guess um, it either can't or I'm doing something wrong so the way I get around it is put the menu toggle in here you get into the menu um, option and then you can put the remap sort of overrides or you could tweak this to be exactly as you want and um, there's probably a few different ways of doing it but that's the way I do it I put the, the extra line in here so then when I hold down select and or Z trigger and tap the C button um, that does it I can get in the menu and make the changes there um, and that's pretty much it really that's just showing you the the other buttons that are the detail and because I've got I chose a select button for the Z button rather than using the Z trigger as right trigger or something else then this is enabling um, the retroarch hotkeys to work because otherwise it wouldn't I don't think it would be able to generate this enable hotkey button for me so none of the hotkeys would work so it is worth choosing one of your N64 buttons as the select key if you're going to use RetroArch. That said, I think most people would suggest you use the other emulator anyway. But that's where that file is. That's where you can edit it. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, so the rest of the controller config files are all in the N64 directory. So if I go back a directory like that, cd space dot dot, back again, and back again, then in the configs directory, we're going to change to N64. So our current path there is now apt retrofy configs n64 and we can see the files in here and the reason this directory has more files than most of the um, most of the other system directories or conf system config directories is because normally whilst it would just have emulator CFG as the retroarch uh, or rather retropy script to say hey this is the default emulator I want or this is the choice of emulators um, plus the retroarch config itself it's also got all the rest of the files that relate to or actually those two don't but most of the other files relate to Moopin64 plus the other the 
the other emulator, I guess, really, that's um, by default. I think there's some other N64 emulators, or at least one other one in experimental, but let's just stick with the defaults, which is the RetroArch 1 and Mupin 64 Plus, and native, if you like. Uh, okay, so when I was in the RetroArch version, and I went in the Core Remap button um, options, and said I want to change the way some of these keys are mapped, and hit Save, it generated this folder, and that's the Remap folder, and I can have a look in there, and I can see it's got this... Um, I can see it's got the single file here, Mupin64 Plus, and that looks like this. Um, if I'm going too fast and you want to um, check out what I'm typing, just hit pause. It's, hopefully it's clear enough on the screen. Um, these are just the, the B and the A. I sort of flip those round, although I could go back in that file we saw a minute ago and manually put those in. Um, yeah, so you, it's just this is what's read um, when you run that system again. So I did it that way. Possibly not the best way, but it works. Okay, um, but the emulator that I'd recommend you use, Mupin64 Plus, let's look at that config file. This input, input auto cfg.ini, is also generated when you go through the emulation station process of registering the, the button presses. Um, but I've manually changed mine because, as you saw earlier, actually, the default didn't seem to want to play ball completely. So I've just gone in and typed um, those details. And if I have a look at it, If I go in the right directory and then have a look at it, you can see at the bottom, if I scroll up, so first I've got the keyboard, um, if I want to use the keyboard, uh, it's there, plus some um, escape escapes, it doesn't say that there, but it does, um, yeah, I can't see where that is there. Uh, the next one is my USB standard sort of NES, um, Super Nintendo emulated um, controller, but that's next to impossible to properly play N64 games with because... Uh, it's missing half the buttons, so you know it's going to make it tricky. Next one is here, 8 bit D, N64 gamepad. And here are the buttons that I've um, edited that work for me. And I don't see why they wouldn't work for you if you've got exactly the same controller. It should work um, absolutely fine. You can see all the codes there. I'll put a link to this in um, the description so you can just copy and paste it into this file if you want um, to get up and running. But once you've um, registered that Bluetooth controller, as you saw um, right at the start, sort of much earlier on in the video, then uh, it's happy to use these and away you go. It should be exactly the same codes and there uh, shouldn't be any problem getting up and running. And as I showed at the start of the video, the controller itself is um, great quality. Aesthetically, it looks just like the original. 8-bit um, and Retro Bit have clearly done a really good job in collaborating to produce that. And I think it's a really fantastic controller, and they're not even paying me. So I think um, it's definitely worthwhile checking that out. Uh, if you like the video, please do hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, click the thumbs down. And if you just got generally a bit confused because I've not been very clear, um, there's not a button for that. You just have to um, maybe add a comment. So thanks for watching, and I'll do another video soon. Thanks.